I got a lot of feedback on my last pointers versus values video. I had originally planned to look at other scenarios in this next video, but based on the feedback, it's obvious that a deeper dive is needed on this first scenario. Let's look at three pieces of feedback from the previous video. First, I came up with a simpler way to ensure that the compiler doesn't completely optimize away the thing that I'm trying to test. So these new tests just extract one integer value from the structure instead of calling a method on it. It's interesting to note that this change didn't alter the measured times. The next point was that returning a fully zeroed structure was probably allowing the compiler to do some optimizations that weren't really relevant. After all, if you need a fully zeroed structure, you don't really need a function anyway. The final point is that the compiler allocates data on the stack anytime it can prove that it's safe to do so. So the use of a pointer doesn't automatically guarantee a heap allocation. This chart shows the four combinations I'll be investigating. For each of these combinations, I'm testing with a zeroed and non-zeroed structure and comparing returning pointers versus returning a value for a total of 16 benchmarks. The results are quite interesting. It's clear that the compiler is able to do some optimizations when it knows that the structure is fully zeroed. We can see that assigning a structure value with non-zeroed members doubles the time required. The optimizations get even more aggressive when the compiler is confident that it can define a very limited scope for the use of the value. It's likely that most of the code in these two tests is being optimized away completely. And the performance of both scenarios is too fast to reliably measure. Finally, when a populated struct is guaranteed to stay on the stack, we finally see an example of where returning a pointer is faster. I'll come back to that in a moment, but first, let's look at the functions that I'm artificially preventing the compiler from inlining. Why would I do that? Well, imagine you're building a self-driving car, and you want to make sure that it will stop if a small child wanders into the road. Would you use an actual child in testing? Any sane person would agree that's a terrible idea. Use a cardboard cutout or something, right? Luckily, I'm not doing the kind of testing here that puts anyone's life at risk, but if I want to see how a non-inlinable function behaves, I could write a complex function that can't be inlined, or I can, much more simply, simulate a complex function by telling Go that it's not allowed to inline the function. In the real world, it's easy enough to write functions that are too complex to be inlined, but there's no need to do that for this testing purpose. And if I did, the function would be slower than the inlineable version, thus the results wouldn't be comparable. The point being that the no inline benchmarks are here to show you what to expect if your function can't be inlined for whatever reason. An important thing to consider. If you're returning a pointer from a function that cannot be inlined, that memory cannot be on the stack. If the function can't be inlined, the compiler has to allocate to the heap. The opinion I concluded my last video with is that you should not return pointers on the assumption that it will be a performance improvement. In light of this deeper dive, do I still hold to that opinion? Let's arrange the data in a way that I hope makes it easy to digest. Here I've made two charts, one for a zeroed struct and one for an initialized struct. We can see that returning a value is a good bit faster in six of the eight scenarios. In one scenario, the performance is too close to call a clear winner. The only case where a pointer is faster is when the function can be inlined and the value is guaranteed to end up on the stack. Now it's pretty easy to tell if your function is going to be inlined. What's not easy is doing something about it if the compiler isn't able to inline it. This example probably looks familiar to many. Implementations of this interface probably reach out to a database or another service to get their values, which means it can be difficult or more likely impossible to ensure that such functions are inlineable. But even if you know that your function will be inlined, do you know that other programmers that use the function, including future you, will use it in a way that ensures that the resultant data will be allocated to the stack? So I stick to my original recommendation. Don't return pointers on the assumption that it will improve performance. Odds are it will actually make things slower. Return pointers when there's a good reason to, like when you need multiple references to the same data. Now there are a lot of other scenarios that need to be investigated to really round out this pointer versus value discussion, and I'll address those in future videos. For now, I hope this information is useful.